this is Jeff Cowan coming to you from Jeff Cowan's Pro Talk. Thank you for listening to my weekly podcast entitled Write Service, Write Your Own Paycheck, The Path to Making Over $100,000 a Year When Writing Service in the Automotive Industry. Because as we're recording this, like I say, every week, 20% of you that are doing that job right now are making that kind of money. 80% of you are not. So how do you get to the $100,000 mark? It's real simple. You just keep coming back and listening to me every Thursday. You take the techniques, the word tracks, the processes, the thought and ideas that I throw at you, and you put them into practice. See, that's the secret there. You have to actually do what we talk about here. That's what makes it work. And you, too, can make $100,000 a year writing service. Now, if you're already doing that, you want to make more, keep listening. I'll give you some ideas because I work with people that make that kind of money all the time on service drives, and they, they do some really cool stuff. You know what I mean? So I want you to, too, because the way I look at it, if you're going to be there 10 hours a day, why not maximize the opportunity? That's what I say. All right, now, you remember from last week, we're in the middle of a series here. We're at the start of a series where we're talking about myths because what we discussed last week was simply this. Many of you out there that are not making the 100000 a year, the 80% of you, typically uh, that, that happens because you start buying into these myths that surround service writing. These myths, like I explained last week, sometimes come the manu from the manufacturers, they come from vendors, they come from business owners, they come from managers, and many times they're just created in the heads of service advisors that are looking for excuses and, and not being able to do what they're paid to do. All right, because it's easier to excuse things away. So what I'm going to do, like I did last week, is I'm going to describe to you about four or five of these myths, and I'm going to explain to you why they're myths. And, and, and again, like I said at the end of the, the meeting last week, if you want to challenge me on any of this stuff or you want to ask more questions about it, well, simply call me at 1-800-248-2931, 1-800-248-2931. I'd be more than willing to talk to you about any of this stuff and back it up with real numbers because uh, I'm telling you, these, these myths are just that myth. So let's take a look at number six. Last week we did the first five. Now we're ready for number six. Service riders will not do what you ask them to, like walk around vehicles, memorize word tracks, nor do they respond to authority well. Well, no, they don't respond to weak leaders and weak leadership. I mean, come on. I mean, can you imagine being in the Marines and the sergeant, the drill sergeant says, do this, and his people looked at him and said, I don't feel like it today. I don't want to. I mean, are you kidding me? I mean, that would never work. I mean, in any business or any team there is, there's got to be a leader and there's got to be people that follow. I mean, you need to set up a culture of just that. You're paid to follow my lead. I'm going to ask you to do things that are easy. I'll never ask you to do anything that I won't do myself. From time to time, I'm going to change what I ask you to do. We're going to add things in. We're going to spice it up, spruce it up. It's part of it, you know. I'll give you some ideas, and most of the time, they're going to work because I'm your leader. I've done this for a long time. Every once in a while, I'll give you a new idea, and it won't work, and we'll change it for something that does. You're the leader. You're signing their check. I mean, think about it this way, leaders, because here's what I want you to think. And we're going to address this, by the way, in a few weeks here when I tell you, show you how to hire people because a lot of you are having trouble with that. But let me explain it to you this way. When you have a service advisor that refuses to walk around a car, we have a service advisor that refuses to, you, to use word tracks that you know are going to get you perfect survey scores, higher retention, and more sales. When you have a service advisor that refuses basically to follow your lead, what you're allowing that one person to do is dictate how much you are going to make. What you're allowing that one person to dictate is how much that shop is going to make. What you're allowing that one person to dictate is who's running the shop. You or them. And let me tell you something. If I'm signing somebody's check, they're not going to dictate to me how much I'm going to make. Now, I think that I'm an effective leader. As a matter of fact, I know I'm an effective leader, and I think the people that work with me generally like me. I don't think that they, they would fall in love with me necessarily, but I do know they respect me and they follow me. We, we have a lot of laughs at Pro Talk. We really do. We have a great time. And it's all based on mutual respect. I'm the leader. I sign your check. I've been doing this way longer than you have, so I'm going to ask you to do certain things, and I'm going to ask you to perform to a certain level. And as long as you can do that, then you can stay here. If you can't do that, then we'll retrain you, and if after retraining you still can't do it, then you simply can't work here. It doesn't mean that I don't like you. It doesn't mean that I don't, don't have respect for you. It just means I'm not going to allow you to dictate the success of the company. It's not fair to the other people that work in your company to be bogged down by one stubborn person that refuses to do what's right. All right. I mean, I know I get a little bit passionate there, but come on, who's leading this thing? Stand up. Either stand, stand up and be a strong leader or get the hell out of the way and let somebody sit in the chair that will be. I mean, your business owner has got a lot on the line, and you owe it to them to deliver what you can as their leader. And if you got somebody that's being insubordinate, then do what you got to do. I mean, that's what I would do. Uh, myth number seven, it takes a special service writer to be able to handle high-line vehicles because high-line customers are different. 
Again, the myth is it takes a special service advisor, special type of service advisor to handle Highline customers because Highline customers are different. Baloney, it's a myth. Now, Highline customers are rarely different from non-Highline customers. As a matter of fact, many times they're, exact, they're the exact same company, customer. I mean, how many of you people at a BMW store have seen somebody come in, drop their Beamer off, and then they go out in the car and climb in their spouse's truck? Okay, their big Ford 350. Uh, right? How many times have, have, have you seen something like that happen? So you'll be at a, at a Mercedes store and somebody drops it off and they go out and they get in their Chevy van. How many times have you been at a Lexus store and seen somebody come in, their, their, their ride home is, is, is a, a Toyota? I mean, they're basically the same people. Now, I don't mean to be pretentious here, but I've worked very hard and I live on a street with a lot of successful people. And in every one of these driveways, there's a Mercedes, there's an Audi, you know, somebody's got one of these cars, there's a Lexus, uh, there's BMWs, there's Teslas sitting all over the place. I mean, all these cars, uh, you know, Porsche, uh, uh, the, the whole thing. You know, me and my neighbors, this is the type of cars we drive, but be sitting beside every single one of those cars is a Nissan, a Toyota, a General Motors product, a Hyundai, a Honda, a Ford, or whatever. I mean, if you come to my house, look at my driveway, you pull up the garage doors, you're going to see a Mercedes uh, SUV sitting on one side of the, on the garage, and on the other, you're going to see a Ford Explorer sitting on the other. I mean, they're the same customers. So this is a myth. I mean, these customers, and many times, I'll tell you what's interesting, is many times the Highline customers complain that the service they get at the Highline store is not as good at the, that they get at their Ford General Motors and Chrysler stores. I mean, this is a big myth. I mean, it's all simple customer handling skills, okay? Customer handling skills. Myth number eight, service riders do not need the same amount of training as the car sales staff. Now, I know we have a lot of people listening here that, that uh, are not connected to a car dealership, but they own service businesses, so this one is for car dealerships. Service riders do not need the same amount of training as the car sales staff. Well, let's just look at it this way, okay? A service advisor that writes just 15 repair orders a day will generate more gross income for your business than a car salesperson does that delivers 25 cars in that same month. That service advisor that writes 15 customers in a single day will see more customers in a month than that car salesperson typically will in the entire month. They'll see more people in one day, I mean. They'll see one more people in one day than the average car salesperson will in a week. They'll have more impact on your survey scores. They'll have more impact on your customer retention. And they will have more impact on you selling cars. We've all heard the old term, who sells the first car? Sells. Who sells the, first, the second car? Service. Okay, so if sales sells the first one, service sells the second one, what would make you think these people that have more impact on your retention, your survey scores, and generate more gross profit for your dealership, what would make you think they would need any less training? If anything, they need more. And let me give you another piece of advice here. Don't count on the factory. Their training doesn't work. Don't depend solely on your vendors who deliver product. Some of it's good, but it's not exactly what you need. I mean, you're going to have to roll up your sleeves, and you're going to have to go find somebody like me who can show you how to get it done the right way. And I don't care if that sounds pretentious or not. Call me up. I'll share the facts with you. I'll, I'll compare my stuff to the programs. Uh, of the manufacturers that are out there all day long and kick their ass up and down the street all day long. And it's just not me. I've got some competitors out there that are just as, that are, I won't say just as good, but they're really good at what they do. And uh, they can show you as well that, you know, I mean, come on, let's go. All right. All right. They don't need the same amount of training. That's a myth. Now, before I give you myth number nine and 10 for this week, I want to talk to you about this book. It's called Right Service, Write Your Own uh, Paycheck. The Path to Making $100,000 a Year. Managers, business owners, get your people this book. What are you waiting for? You keep watching these videos, and then everybody feels good, and you walk out, you don't do nothing. Let's get serious about this. Get them a book. You can get it at Amazon.com, or you can get it at AutomotiveServiceTraining.com, AutomotiveServiceTraining.com, or you can call 1-800-248-2931 and get that book. It also has a companion video series with over 10 hours of videos that I'm teaching with full testing and the like. Got a new service advisor, need somebody who needs a refresher? Get him that book. Get him that video. Come on, let's go. Let's Let's get this thing done. Also, I've got a book sitting here called What I've Learned from uh, Attending Over 35 Indy 500s. Uh, now, this is a good book. This is becoming a national bestseller here. We just got approval from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway themselves. So they're going to be offering this book at the gift shop during the Indy 500 and throughout the rest of the next year. Uh, it's lessons in sales, motivation, leadership, management, and life in general. Uh, you can get it on Amazon.com in hardcover, softcover, soon to be audiobook as well. You can download it to your tablet. You can also download the other one to your tablet if you want. Uh, and you can get this one at uh, either uh, AutomotiveServiceTraining.com through us or TheJeffCowan.com. 
Also, I want to let you know that I've got some workshops coming up. you got to get signed up for these workshops. I personally will be there teaching my workshops, showing you and your people how to get perfect survey scores, how to get uh, high customer retention above 85% within months, and show you how to get the maximum amount of sales from your people. No arm twisting, uh, no, no, uh, no pushing, no selling stuff that doesn't be sold, just pure salesmanship. I'll be teaching these classes myself. I'm going to be in Toronto, I'm going to be in Phoenix, I'm going to be in Indianapolis, and I'm leaving one out here, and I'm going to be Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia is really taking off here, by the way. Man, there's people down there excited about Jeff coming to town, and I'm excited to go there. So is Toronto, man. Toronto's always good, though. Uh, and the others aren't doing bad, but those two are really selling quick. All right, so let's go back to this. Today we talked about uh, uh, some myths already. We talked about uh, service riders uh, won't do what you ask if you, you know, like walk around cars and whatever, because you suck if they won't do it as a leader. Uh, myth, uh, it takes a special service rider to handle high-line customers. Baloney, it's the same customer. Myth eight, service riders don't need the same amount of training as car salespeople if you're at a car dealership. Really? They, they work with more people than your, your car sales staff. They don't need as much. Huh. All right, myth number nine. Well, I can't even believe this one comes up uh, in today's environment, but it comes up all the time. Women service riders who are mothers are risky due to parental responsibilities. Let me repeat that one, man. I'm, I'm almost afraid to talk about it. Women service riders who are mothers are risky due to parental responsibilities. That's a myth. Some of the best service advisors, matter of fact, the best service advisors I know. If I was to rank all the service advisors I've worked with over the last 30 years out of the top 10, the top seven, the top seven are women, and six of them have kids. Five of them have been, are mothers and raise their kids on their own. I mean, they sometimes make some of the best service advisors out there. Think mother, bu mother bear, and, 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 and cubs. I mean, they could go the extra mile to make sure their kids are fed, they're housed, they're clothed, they've got transportation, and they get the best of everything they can get. I mean, come on. The, uh, I mean, if I was you, I mean, I, 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 if, if everything's equal, I, I mean, I, I got to be careful what I say here, but this is just a myth. I mean, tell it to Abigail Adams, you know, president of, of, of John Adams and, and the mother of John Quincy Adams. Now, I know some people say, well, you go way back there, you know, life was so much easier because we didn't have baloney. Life back there was hard. Today, we've got it easy. Can you imagine getting up out of bed at 4 o'clock in the morning and going to kill your breakfast? Can you imagine getting, have to go out at 11 o'clock in the middle of the afternoon and kill your breakfast and, and, and eat it and, and, have, and, and have to manage hundreds of acres? I mean, this, yeah, this woman was tough. You've never read it at, at, and a biography about Abigail Adams, that'll sum up everything you need to know about women. I mean, women are tough, man. So when it comes to women service writers, just because they have kids, that's the ones I'd look at first of me. Matter of fact, here at Pro Talk, I've got several single mothers working here, and I find them to be some of the hardest, most dedicated uh, workers that I've ever, 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 ever seen, you know? I mean, come on. It, it's, it's, it's what, 2018? Come on. Myth number 10, service writers who work in economically challenged areas cannot sell as much as writers do that work in affluent areas. Myth! And here's how I can prove this. If I was, you know, no, first of all, when we go into service drive as, as a company, we advertise that we'll get a 5 tenth increase within the first week, and we do. I mean, that's what we do. But when we go into areas that have financially challenged customers, we get a 7 tenth increase. Now, if I was to list out over the last 30 years all the zip codes that we've visited, you would see that at any given time, including today, 20% of the time we're on a service drive. It's a service drive that's in a non-affluent area, meaning their customers are broke, poor net, poor, poor uh, uh, financially challenged uh, people, but we get a seven-tenth increase. Well, Jeff, that doesn't make any sense. How can you go to a place where they have customers that have less money, but you sell them more? Well, it's easy. See, a financially challenged customer that comes in, they've got choices, and here's what their choices are when they need a repair or service. A, buy a new car. They don't have money. They can't do that. So now we're stuck with number two, which is to uh, walk to work. Well, since most people live 10 miles away from where they work, they'd spend more time walking to and from work than they would at work, so that's not good. So now we're stuck with option three, which is public transportation. Expensive. If you don't have money, you can't do that. So now we're stuck with number four, and what's number four? Repair the car. You know, you, you know what? They will. You know why? Because they under, the more financially challenged a customer is, the more important that car is. Now, I will admit, it takes a little bit different skill set and some different word tracks and techniques to close that customer, and you will have a higher percentage that will decline the the service today, but if you call them back within 24 hours and ask them to come back in, 48 tops, 70% of them will. And we can talk about that in a future podcast. You have got a perfect uh, uh, word track that makes that happen uh, for you. So this is a myth. The more financially challenged the customer is, I have found 
the more they're more the more they're likely to spend on their vehicle because the, the the vehicle is more important to them because if their vehicle stops and it doesn't work then they can't do the most important thing of going back getting back and forth to work which means they can't get paid which means their financial situation is going to get worse and they know that so those are myths 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 just like last week myths all right my name is Jeff Cowan from Jeff Cowan's Pro Talk, and I really, really, truly appreciate you listening to these uh, podcasts. The audience is growing. I want you to be the best you can be. And between now and next week, here's what I want you to do. Buy the book, sign up for the workshop, and go find as many customers as you can. I want you to get them excited about your product, so excited that they buy it, and they give you perfect survey scores. They come back and be the, bring their friends, so you get customer retention. You get the commission. You get to live the lifestyle you so deserve because you're going to be there all day long. Let's maximize that opportunity and stop excusing ourselves out of these paychecks that we deserve because here's what I'm going to do between now and next week. That. I'm going to go find some customers. I'm going to have some fun, and I am going to live life. You should do it too. It's fun. Sign up for the workshop. See you next week.